This week we're hunting in the rugged backcountry of central Idaho, home to bighorn sheep, wolves, giant mule deer, and elk. On last week's episode, we had some very close encounters, but I let greed get the best of me and let my best opportunities walk by. Subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can keep tabs on the rest of our season. For the next 10 days, it was all I could do to lay eyes on an elk. But when bow hunting, a stubborn refusal to give up is often our greatest asset. So I'm sitting here at camp, it's about uh, 3.30 or so in the afternoon. I'm just about getting ready to go out after some elk that I found uh, last night. And actually, they're right here in this patch of timber. And that's like a quarter mile from camp, just above camp. But it's actually a really good place for them to be um, from their perspective. It's, uh, it's an easy place to access from my perspective but it's not going to be an easy place to get in on them. Um, the wind is coming this way, and so it's like pretty much a south wind right now, and that's the predominant wind in this valley. And um, so if I try to access them from over here, if I try to go around this side and come in on top of them, um, they're going to wind me. And Plus, it's all just open grass sagebrush. They'd see me coming from half a mile away. On the downwind side, it's really rocky, steep, uh, hard to travel country, and it's also open. And so, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get to them. There's one bull up there and six cows, or at least it was last night, but I think I'm gonna, obviously going to have to stick to the downwind side of it, um, but there's a little draw that I may, might be able to get up um, and make a play on them, but I won't know until I get up there and actually see what the wind's doing in that little bowl um, and then uh, what the, the little small breaks in topography are doing. You know, if there's, if I'm going to have to walk across an open hillside, the, the odds are pretty low that I'm going to get to them because they're going to see me before I get to them. But if there's some a little bit of topography that I can use to navigate up there, um, I think I got a pretty good chance because it's a it's a really small patch of timber. I mean, if they're in there, if they didn't leave last night, if they're in there, um, I'm going to find them. So we'll uh, we'll give it our best shot. Right there. Just stepped out of that little patch of timber there. Well, 
Well, not going to be able to get to them today. I hiked all the way up this ridge that I thought connected to another ridge where I could get uh, get close to them, but I just got cliffed out. This thing, it's like this own its own independent ridge. See, I thought this thing connected over there, and then I was just gonna get in those trees and kinda go down on them like that. But obviously, I should have looked at a topo map. Probably hiked a thousand vertical feet for nothing. But it's a good vantage point. I'll watch them today, see what they do. And then I'm also, once the sun goes down, Got about another hour. Um, I'll be able to see this whole other phase. I'll be able to pretty much see everything from up here, everything that I've been hunting. And so, um, should have a good game plan for tomorrow morning. Figure out what the elk are doing over on these other faces. Then I'll uh, get up early and get after them. Still kind of sucks though. Timber they're bedding in is not but about 80 but 80 yards square. But I don't know how in the hell to get to them morning or evening. They just came out of that timber. They're feeding into the wind. They're at the top of the draw, so if you try to come in from the bottom, they're gonna wind you. There's nothing but open grass slope above them. If they tried to come in that way, they'd hear you and see you. I think the only way to do it would be to go in right up the bottom of the draw first thing in the morning and just hope that they're out somewhere feeding because they're going to come back into that patch of timber once the sun hits. And just be there waiting on them. Hope the wind stays steady. I think that's the only way to do it. I got a good spot. All right, that's the plan. I'm gonna be right there in that patch of timber at daybreak. And we'll see how it shakes out. After getting into position in the timber, the elk feed over the ridge right on cue. And with only two likely entry points into the timber, I pick one and set the camera up. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong one and didn't get any footage of the bull. So I just shot a bull. And, uh... Um now he's bleeding really good. The, the hit was, it was a little bit farther back than I wanted it. But he is, uh, I mean, it's a steady stream of blood. So, I mean, he can't go on like this for very long. So, uh, I'm gonna stick on the trail and see what we find. Out of all the skills that make up the hunter's craft, trailing is often the least acknowledged. Marksmanship, scouting, and even butchering are all important and better understood, but it's the ability to follow a track that allows us to keep our end of the bargain once an arrow is loosed. All his cows just came running out of that patch of timber. There's still something in that timber. I can hear it. I'm betting that that is that bull. Nope, it's another cow and a calf. 
so the bull didn't come out, so he must, he's got to be in that timber. Still a good, really good trail, but it's getting uh, more sparse, so that really freaking sucks. in the ravine. So that means he went all the way. There's no other facet of hunting that is shrouded in as much mystery as tracking and trailing, but it's a learned skill like any other. A partial track, a turned stone, bent or matted grass, the signs are always there, we just have to learn to see. But like hitting the bullseye takes more than just a draw and a release, seeing takes more than just looking. In total, this bull went almost a mile from where he was shot, for half of which there was no blood at all. Being able to hit what you're aiming at and developing confidence in your ability to do that is one of the most important aspects of bow hunting. But no matter how good you are or how much you practice, things won't always go as planned. But persistence, a certain amount of stubbornness, and a practiced eye can often spell the difference between packing out an elk and telling the story around a campfire or experiencing a sleepless night turning the day's events over in your head again and again, thinking about the myriad ways you could have done things differently. This turned out to be one of the toughest Septembers I've ever had, hunting for 19 days for the opportunity to lose a single arrow and bring home a few hundred pounds of some of the best meat the persistence can earn. Regardless of how the hunt turns out, 
Returning home after that much time away is one of the greatest feelings ever. And something tells me that it's always been that way. Grab that big, grab that piece right there and pull it out. What, what piece? That big one that you just had your hand on. This thing. Take both hands to get it. And hold it way up. Drop it. Is it the rib? That's his back strap. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a birthday strap right there. <laughs> that's a bunch of steaks right there. Birthday treat. Samson's birthday today. <laughs> I was always just like, can I have my birthday? Birthday cake. That's yeah, that's her birthday cake. Y'all, huh? What is this? Is this is like a sap. It's called a geode. That's those are all crystals inside there. Those are crystals. Yeah. Are all these crystals? Mm-hmm. Oh, careful! Don't you don't you get on the Google and see if you, you see, can buddy? see if you can find. Do you out have any more form. crystals? I got some for you too. I'm rich. We're rich. Uh, that's obsidian. How do you know what that is? Because it's black, sharp, shiny rock. Do you, know, do you know what those are? Huh? Do you know what those are? Crystals? Nope, that's obsidian. It's oh. it's it's the remains of an obsidian tool that, that somebody made thousands of years ago. Some hunter made that a long, 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 long time ago. I think it's part of an arrow or something? It could be part of an arrowhead. Think about that. I don't think it's really cool. Okay, so y'all don't lose that I'm stuff, okay? Okay. Come look what I made. Okay, what'd you make? 